everybody and welcome to Knit Grit. My name is Cody and in today's video we are going to be making these cute little top hats which can go on the video that I just made last week for the pattern of Jack, my baby Luna body with the little pumpkin head that I did last video and it's this cute little top hat that you can put right on top. I'm tending to make these so that they match the suspenders. It's super cute. You can also put this on your Among Us character. I made one that, don't fall over Jack. Okay, there we go, as I bounce everything over. All right, so I made one for my little guy here. I can easily attach this using Velcro dots if I wanted to, but I wanted to be able to make it removable and a lot of people want to make it removable. So you could easily just put like a Velcro dot on a spot on the underside of the hat, like say right here, and then have a Velcro spot where you put your hats right here or so and then that would keep it attached right now i'm just using a darning needle because that's what i have but you could easily use a uh, hook and loop sew on fasteners or you could also use snaps which i also have but i was too lazy and did not want to sew those on because i don't have a good sewing set believe it or not all right so basically in today's video i'm going to describe the pattern for how i'm going to make jack's uh, little top hat here. I'm going to be using the same yarn that I did for his little pants, which is I Love This Cotton, for which is a Hobby Lobby brand, and it's so nice. It is a worsted weight size four. You are also going to need a darning needle, so one of these little blunt tipped needles like so, and you're also going to need some scissors, and I am going to be using a size D3 or a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using my Furls crochet hook. It is ergonomic, it is lovely. I have an affiliate code with them, and if you want a coupon code to get one of these for yourself, it is down in the description below. I just wanna be completely transparent, but I only became an affiliate after I bought their stuff in the first place, and I asked to be an affiliate. So if that gives you an idea of how much I love this crochet hook, I really do, it's so nice. So, all right. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to post the pattern for it up here so you can follow along. I'm also going to be posting little patterns along the bottom just like I do for all of my other videos. I'm going to have a printable PDF that you can also download on Ravelry and on Lovecrafts, which will have this size top hat and also a top hat that is bigger and will fit on a Luna squish head. So if you're curious for that, it will be free for the first week and you can go down below and pick that up right down below in the description box. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I have this lovely worsted weight yarn. I'm going to leave a decently long tail, like a good six inch long tail, like so, and I'm going to create a slip knot. Let's re-angle this so that we can actually look at this the right way. There we go, slip knot. We're gonna put that onto our hook, and now we're going to chain two. So one and two. We're going to place our hook into our very first chain making a magic ring essentially the way that I do and I've shown in a couple of other videos we're then going to create six single crochet inside of that same chain for our round one essentially so this is third fourth and your hole's gonna blow out that's fine five and six Right. In order to unblow out your hole right here for your beginning ring, you're going to want to pull on your tail and that will bring it in. What I like to do for this hat to make it so that I can actually cut this thread without worrying about it unraveling is, is I'm going to treat this thread as if it is a part of my work. So I'm going to put my needle into my very first, I'm working in the round, into my very first front loop. I'm doing front loop only, but you can do both loops if you'd like, it doesn't super duper matter, except for one round where we're gonna go through back loop only. We are going to go through the front loop and we're gonna put our tail right in front and I'm going to increase every single one of these stitches for round two. So I'm going to go back inside that same stitch and put another stitch inside. That is our increase, so one, two, within a single stitch from the previous round. Now we're going to into our next stitch I'm keeping my tail as if it is a part of my stitch right there. One, trying not to split my yarn, and two, same stitch. Going into our third stitch here, one, and two, keeping our tail in the middle of it just to keep it nice and tight. 
This is our fourth stitch. One and two. Going into our fifth stitch. There we go. One and two. And then our final stitch right here, we're going to go one and two. Pulling our tail ever occasionally. I'm gonna put that now to the back and that will be my stitch marker for when I'm done with my third round. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. What we're going to do is we're going to go from, we went from six to 12 and now we're gonna go from 12 to 18. We're only increasing up to 24 and I'll show you how I do that. So this is row three. We're going to single crochet one in the next stitch and then in the second stitch, we're going to increase and we're going to do that the entire way around. So one and increase. We're going from 12 up to 18, increasing six stitches every single round essentially until we get to 24 at the end. But right now we're only going up to 18, if that makes sense. Increase one and increase. one and increase. I believe we have one more but I'm gonna make sure I don't split that. We have one more increase round I believe. Repetition and increase. So I'm gonna count real quick and make sure I don't have any more to increase that round. Make sure I'm at the end. I'm pretty sure I'm at the end. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, we are now at 18 stitches. After round three, we are going on to round four. But first, I'm going to take my hook. I'm going to place it inside my last increase. And I'm going to pull my tail through just to make it so that I can see when my uh, beginning of my rounds are. It's a stitch marker and how I do my stitch markers. So here, I like to stagger my increases so that I don't get weird wonky stacking lines, essentially. I have a video where I describe stacking versus staggering. If you're interested in knowing more about that, that will be linked down below. But the way that we stagger our stitches is on our even rounds. So when we're single crocheting two and increasing to get up to the 24, instead we're going to single crochet one. Next stitch, we're going to increase and then single crochet one. That offsets your increases so that they're all not all across from one another and that doesn't create a line. I like how this looks better. So again, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one. So if you look, there's still two stitches between each increase. You're just staggering them essentially. You're making it so that they're not all lined up. So again, single crochet one, increase. Oh, I split my yarn. I'm gonna undo that. Increase, there we go single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one. There we go. I'm having an issue for some reason. And this should be our last repetition. So single crochet one, increase, and single crochet one. Our stitch is now in line with where our little stitch marker is coming out of. I'm gonna pull my tail a little bit. And now I'm gonna take my hook and put it through, take my tail out from where it was and pull it through this last one so that I can be updated and move my stitch marker and move my stitch marker forward. All right, so now we're at the very top of our hat essentially. And what I like to do for my top hat is I like to create this ridge along the top to give it a better shape. So the way that I do that is for 
one, two, three, four, round five, we are going to go through back loop only to create this front row ridge essentially all along the top. We have 24 stitches on our work right now and we're going to go through all 24 of these stitches and just go through the back loop only, leaving our front loop just to lay on the front. Three, four, and you can see the line already forming after a couple stitches. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16 and it's wanting to curl up on itself it's okay you can just correct it and just roll it outwards i believe 16 i'm just gonna go until i get to the little tail there 17 18 19, oop, 20, 1, oh, this is 22, excuse me, 23, and 24. All right, so now I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to move it forward just to keep track of where I am. And from here, we are going to just single crochet around with the front loop. So or go back to however it is you were doing it before. If you're going through both loops, that's fine, but I tend to go through just the front loop only, and I'm gonna do that for the next four rounds. So I'm gonna go around and around, and then I'll be right back as soon as that is done. We're just going through all 24 stitches and going down four rounds. So around, 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 and around. Be right back as soon as that's done, and then I'll show you how I make the shape along the bottom. Okay, so we've gone around for four rounds, and now what I like to do, I've noticed, so I wanna show you the difference between, where did my other one go? There it went. This over here, it looks like it tapers during this round, it goes inward, and to me that looks more top hat-ish. It's very subtle, but if I don't taper in, you end up with what looks like a sun hat. It's not bad, but if you want a hat that looks more like a top hat versus a sun hat, or like a Amish farmer's hat or whatever, um, if you're going for more of a top hat look, you're going to want to do this next step. Otherwise, just single crochet around one more round. So for this top hat, you're going to want to taper it. And the way that I do that is we're going to, again, we're gonna do the inverse of what we just did for our last increase round. So we're going to single crochet one, decrease single crochet one the entire way around. I'm also gonna move my tail so it helps a little bit with visualizing when the things end. There we go. So we're going to taper off during this round and we're going to single crochet one. And the way that I decrease is I put my hook through the both loops of the two stitches that I would like to decrease and then I single crochet through both of them as if they are one. And that makes a nice invisible decrease. Single crochet one into the next stitch. Single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one. And we're gonna do that five more times for a total of six times along this round. So one, go through both loops, decrease, and single crochet one. Move our work, single crochet one, go through both loops. And I'm going through the front loop only decrease, single crochet one, single crochet one, go through both loops to decrease, single crochet one, single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one, 
That was our fifth repetition, so now this is our last repetition on this round, single crochet one. Pull our yarn out a little bit and try not to bounce too, too much. There we go. Decrease. And single crochet one. I'm going to move forward our yarn once more. And now... I'm moving my yarn forward again, and now we are going to essentially do a funky thing. So what we're going to do for this next round is we're going to increase every single stitch. So this next stitch here, we're going to put two stitches on the inside. This is going to feel really funny to do this for every single stitch. But we're essentially blowing it out and making it go straight. We're going to then go into the next stitch and increase that same stitch. We have 18 stitches and we're blowing it out up to 36. We're going from 18 to 36. Going in here and increasing again. We just went from 24 down to 18 and 18 up to 36. Every single stitch gets an increase. So we're nearing the last couple of stitches. This is also an increase. We're going to want to increase every single stitch. I know it's a bit of a pain in the butt, but, 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 but it looks nice. All right, so that's an increase right there. I'm going to double check and make sure that I have 36 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 36. All right, so we're going to put our work back on our needle. And this is our last round. And what we're going to do is, depending on how wide you want your brim, for this hat right here, I ended up going around for all 36 stitches and I just single crocheted around. Again, I'm going through front loop only, and it looks nice like that. So I'm going to just single crochet all 36 of these stitches. We're not doing any more increasing. We are just going around and around and around until we get to the end, and then I'll show you how I do an invisible fasten off. stitch right here and I'm going to single crochet that stitch and what I'm going to do next is we are all done with all of our single crochets for this work. I take my tail out, I'm going to then take my yarn, cut a nice long tail about eight inches or so and we're going to pull that through our work like so. I'm going to take my darning needle and what I like to do is what I call an invisible fastening off technique. I have a full blown video on the intricacies of why this works and what this does. And I'll have that linked in my crochet 101 playlist down below. But for the simplicity of you not having to go to another video, basically you skip the stitch that would be after where you are here. You skip this stitch and you go through from the front of the second stitch to the back like so 
and pull that through gently. You don't want to tighten things up quite yet. Our goal here is to create a stitch essentially along the edge seam. So what I do next is I'm going to take my darning needle, and this is where we just finished off. That's our last single crochet. We're going to go through the center and through the back and pull that through. And that essentially creates this V formation on your work. The more snug you pull it, the tighter your stitch looks or the smaller your stitch looks. So I'm going to actually flip this inside out now and I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to weave it, weave it through the back loops of my work just to hide my tail and keep that in place. I'm going through the back loops of all of those and I'm gonna just pull that through, if I can, there we go, gently and make sure that this didn't pull too tight. Now that is completely seamless. I'm gonna weave it up through a couple of more stitches. That one right there, not a couple, just one. And I wanna go through back down just to have it so it's going in another direction so it's less likely to come out. So now I can cut that tail and call it all good. It's not so close that it'll, you know, fall off. And I'm gonna put that in my yarn mill ends right there. And because I weaved my tail through the first 12 stitches, I can literally take this and also cut it pretty close to where it was and it's pretty much hidden on the inside. We're gonna flip our hat back inside, right? Yeah. And that is all there is to this cute little top hat. So that is pretty much all there is to this pattern. Again, be sure to check out our Jack tutorial as well as our Among Us Emma Gurumi tutorial. We have a ton more tutorials all over the channel. I believe this is gonna be my 140 fourth video kind of crazy kind of insane i can't believe i've done that many i'm planning on doing tons more stuff i've been posting a lot more in the month of october so always be in the know subscribe hit the little bell if you really want to be in the know for new patterns and things like this i'm hopefully going to be posting some more my comment sections have been being turned off for some reason lately so let me know in another video if this one's been turned off just so that i can know like hey cody your uh, your comments are off again and so i can actually turn them back on because I don't mean for them to be turned off. I do try to keep them open so people can ask me questions and ask about the patterns and be more in the know and generally give tips to other people, which I really like. I've learned quite a few things by having my comment section open and having people just talk on the comment section. It's really nice and I like it a lot. Generally, this community is really positive in the comments, so I generally really like keeping them on. So it's really frustrating that they keep getting turned off. We have Patreon and PayPal links if you'd like to support the channel. We have affiliate links down below, again, if you want to support the channel. And we have Ravelry and all kinds of stuff. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when we post new patterns and new videos, because we do tend to keep free patterns with each of our tutorials so do do that if that is something that you're interested in and until next time guys bye